Hello, good people. Welcome to our part two of creating a custom email marketing system. So in this part, we are going to create or install our SMTP server. And in this context, we are installing Power MTA. So in my previous series, previous part one, I introduced to you what an SMTP server is and we said it's the engine that pushes out the emails. So I'm not gonna dig deep into that. I recommend that you check out our video for part one. We also installed uh, cyber panel in our part one today we are going to install power mta it's quite simple it's quite straightforward remember we also said for you to have a full system you need a mailer and you need uh, an smtp server today we are going to learn how to create an smtp server so I'm going to pick my IP here. Then I'm going to go to Putty and just a quick reminder. These are the results that you get when you install our cyber panel. Here are the credentials. So and it took 20 minutes to install the cyber panel. You may want to refer to uh, the part one of this series so that you can see the command to run to install cyber panel. So I'm going to close this. Open it again. Copy um, the IP. Here's my IP address. I'll copy it there. Open. Login as root. Put in the password. There you go. If you come to the notes here, I've noted that in case you receive your credentials, there are some VPS providers that do not send credentials as a, with the root username. So in case you receive such credentials, these are the commands to run. But because we received our credentials with the root username, we will go ahead to this process. So we are saying install the power MTA file in Windsor CP. After you have acquired the power MTA file, this is the Windsor CP here. Again, I'm going to log in. I need to put in uh, the IP there. Username is root. Then this is the password. I can save this one so that I don't have to keep on. Uh, it is not recommended, but I don't want to keep on logging in to this one. So let me give it uh, a name. Then I'm going to log in. I'm going to say yes. Reconnect. So you come to, I've already downloaded uh, my Power MTA. So here it is, I'm going to open it. And I'm going to install this RPM file in the root. So need to open it, drag and drop. It's going to take a few, uh, it's going to take a few seconds. So uh, we're going to wait for that. After that happens, 
we are going to uh, resume the process. So our process is uh, just about to get finished. And then after it has finished, we are going to go to the next step here, which is uh, <clears throat> After you install the power MTA file in user CP, we are going to run this command in uh, in in putty. So we're going to copy these uh, our IP. Open uh, putty. Login. Yes, and our process has already completed. We're gonna come here. And we run this command. There you go, it takes a few seconds and that is complete. And then we're going to jump into the next one. <clears throat> the next uh, item on the line is, you need to go to Windsor CP, then go to ETC, PMTA, and then you are the license. So we go to Windsor CP, we go to ETC, Then uh, we go to <clears throat> PMTA, here it is, and then we add the license. There you go. So we already added our license there. We check what is uh, the other item. You go to USR and then SBIN, and there'll be two files there, and then we drop them in Windsor CP. So you're gonna come here. You check uh, USR. And then SBIN. It's gonna take a few seconds to load all the files. There you go. And then we come to PMTA, our PMTA file, USR has been, and then drop, drag and drop. Overwrite, you say yes. Again, it's gonna take um, a few seconds to upload that file. And then after that, uh, that file has been uploaded, we're gonna jump into the second file. And also it will take a few uh, seconds as well. So it's, it's worth noting that we do have different SMTPs and uh, PyMTA is one of the best in the market. But then again, it can be a little bit expensive to get it. But if one can, it is one of the best in the market. We also have others that are open source that one can use to do this process as well. So the first file is uh, complete, 100%. So we're going to go to the second file. It's going to take a few uh, microseconds to load that. Done, we go to the second one. 
you drag drop again your variety say yes this also is going to take um, a, a few more seconds once it's done we are going to look at uh, what is the next item on um, on our script as that process continues the next areas that we're going to cover is um, we're going to go to the config file the config file is where we're going to make uh, a few amendments and then these amendments are noted here I'll provide the content for the config file in the description separately <clears throat> because that is what you're gonna use to copy and paste in the in the config file so the process is almost complete it's 100 percent so where do we move on next All right it takes a few microseconds to load that If we go to our script, it's done. Then we here we go to the config file. So where do you find the config file? You go to etc. Then PMTA. Here you go, config file. Here it is. You're gonna delete uh, this content, and you're going to replace that content with um, this content here. I'm gonna provide this document. Copy and paste. So. In our document, there are several places we're going to change. Three places we change the IP, and four places we change the uh, the domain. So if you come to the config file, open that. <clears throat> this is the IP. The places we're going to replace the IP. So let me pick the IP. So I've noted that it's three places that you change the IP. You copy that. You copy that again. And this is the bad. Then save for our domain you're supposed to change four places so here is the domain that I'm using it's a uh, premised in name chip Sure, why my name chip is saying let me try signing in again there you go <clears throat> this is a domain that i want to use So I'm going to come to advanced DNS. Number one, I'm going to add all the records. Even before I add the records, let me add this domain to our config file. So 
as I have noted, there are four places I need to change. I need to change this one. You can use support. Or anything, anything, anything you want to use here. It will be picked up by that domain. And then uh, the other place to change the domain is um, here. Just need to identify the four places. The other one is here. One more place. There you go. You copy that. So our domain is added. So remember to always save. The next step that um, I've noted here is uh, we are done with this. And then you go to putty, you run this command. Let me restart this. Let me close and restart. You run this command. And then in case you've experienced any errors, uh, if you see this error or this error, these are the commands to run. So for now, we are going to generate the DKIM. The DKIM is part of uh, email security. It proves ownership of uh, the sender domain. So you're going to run these commands in putty. So here you go. The other one is ls. Then you copy this command. Then you copy this command as well. All right. Now, if you come to our config, I mean, to our etc PMTA and refresh, you're going to realize that we already have uh, the public DKIM and the private DKIM. So, let me reconnect again. All right, private DKIM and public DKIM. So, our, our core, the private DKIM, you retain it here. The public DKIM, you copy it in your, in your DNS record. So I'm gonna copy this, go to mchip, There is a format that you're supposed to use uh, for the DKIM. So, and this is the format. You should start with this, these letters here, as you can see them. And then I'm gonna remove this part and copy my new one. Again, you should always check there are no gaps. They are usually from my experience, every time I copy, there are usually three gaps. So this is the first one. I'm sure there are no gaps so that it is picked well.
bin remove that one this one you have to check manually if you miss your dkm will be incorrect there you go and always remember to save the other record is uh the dmark this is how you put the DK, the dmark again this is for identification purposes the other one is spf so for the spf all i need to do is uh change this ip here and use uh the ip that we acquired from email belt these are the format of uh, how the ip should look like I also share this document with you for your reference and for you to run the commands so we come to uh, name chip save that always remember to save there are usually five records spf dmac dkem mx and a record so we have done spf we have dmac we have dkem uh we already have a max records a max record is if there is a reply where will your email go that is the max record so in this case i've defined a max record as um where the email will go it will be happening in zoho because you can easily uh, it's user friendly for that matter so i've also done a video on how to get uh, an inbox let me call it an inbox place in zoho i'll also share a link to that effect so i need to change this records and have them as a records and then save all changes all right there you go so if we come back to our putty let's see what we have said in our document so we have added all the records and that is the end of the process so what is remaining is we need to check whether we have done the correct installation so i'm going to restart my putty copy the ip open root and then login 100 or whatever that of whatever the credentials that you're using and then uh, you run this command service emta restart there you go i am pi mta is well configured if you see failed it means that you have not configured your power mta correctly so the other thing is to check um even though you have configured correctly what is are the records in place you should have um, a tester so we are going to use smt power no testing and then mail tester so this is a site to test your whether you have a 10 out of 10 score with your uh, smtp installation so i'm going to copy this bring it here then i'm going to come and pick any address that is associated with uh, the domain we have used to configure it should uh, comfortably uh, send it can be used as a sender domain so in my case i'm going to use the sender i've um, used to configure
put in the password of the VPS. All, not the VPS, the password of, of uh, the SMTP server. And where do you get the password of the SMTP server? If you come to the config file and you scroll up, here you go. This is where you get the credentials of the SMTP server. So if you go to etc pmta config file, you open it, you will see SMTP user and password. So these are the credentials in my context that I am using. And then for the port, as you may have seen, if you scroll up, I'm using port 587, that is the listener. So here, 587, and then uh, you're going to use uh, the host. The host, if you have uh, added the reverse DNS, that is in your VPS, you have added the reverse DNS. That is when you can use the host as the domain. But in our case, we can comfortably use the IP address. It will still serve the purpose. So you copy the IP address there, and then you click on send. If there is any error, it's going to say message failed, but in our case, you've seen the message has been delivered, mail successively sent. So it means our SNTP is correctly configured. So you come here and then you check your score. 10 out of 10. So that is how you, uh, that is how you check your score and then you ensure that your SMTP is correctly configured just to confirm that is how you go about it. So that is how you set up uh, uh, Power MTA. Now you can use these credentials in uh, any mailer of your choice. You can use in Rubedo or you can use in any mailer that you want to run your campaign. We have Rubedo as uh, the favorite. You can use Mailries, you can use Mautic. This SMTP is dynamic and can be used in any, any mailer. So that is it about setting up an SMTP. In case of any query, you can always reach us out. We can be going to share all the items that we, we have uh, said in the description. Thank you and bye for now.